subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the other hand the mother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam was indeed worried and concerned and she was worried and concerned she was praying to Allah she knew from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would take care of the child but she did not know the plan was that this child would end up in the house of the Pharaoh who was actually doing all the executing himself and he was so tempted to do it had it not been for his wife to have pleaded with him to leave the child that this child is actually innocent he would have executed that child too but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives good news to all those who have been separated from their children. Whatever reason, whatever the circumstances are, if you've been separated from your children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return those children to you. Keep on calling out to Allah. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep on being sane, normal. Do not do things that would result in a disaster or a bigger problem. You have a problem, Keep it there, try and make it small, but don't make it bigger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to address the matters that we are facing on earth today in the best possible way so that we can resolve them and we don't create bigger problems out of what we already have. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 13 of Surah Al-Qasas, which is the 28th Surah of the Quran. So we returned him to his mother. How did Allah return him to his mother? It was a miracle. It was Allah's decision. Allah decided that we are going to return him in a unique way. He refused to suckle from anyone. He refused to drink from any woman. And until they found the mother. When they found the mother, they had to call her. They had to pay her in order to come and take care of her own child. Look at the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave such a woman for her patience. And Allah says, three reasons that we returned this child to the mother. Three reasons. Number one, so that her eyes can be cooled, so that she can have the coolness of her eyes. And so that she will not be sad so that her eyes will be cooled and so that she will not be sad. And so that she can know for certain that the promise of Allah is the truth. How many of us, we know that Allah has promised us things, but we are impatient. This goes back to the point we raised a few moments ago. The impatience when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, we returned him to the mother so that she could have the coolness of her eyes and so that her sadness could go and so that she would know that the promise of Allah is definitely the truth. But Allah says, But a lot of them do not know. A lot of them do not know. Anyway, this was part of the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The reason why I made mention of this is my brothers and sisters, we become depressed because we don't trust Allah. If you trust Allah, you will save yourself from depression. If you lay your conviction and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know that he will help you and he will solve your problem, then you will protect yourself from depression and stress and so on. I tell you another very interesting point. When we lay our trust in Allah and we ask Allah to do what is best for us, we must then be convinced that whatever has happened is actually the best thing that could have happened for us, whether we understand it or we don't understand it. Take a look sometimes at what's going on across the globe. There are so many bad things happening. My brothers and sisters, we must pray for the globe. The confusion across the globe at the moment is such that wallahi, we as Muslimin feel so let down. We feel so helpless, but we know that Allah has a plan. So whatever is happening sometimes, what is it resulting in? Yes, there might be people who are looking at Muslims with the eye of suspicion. But I promise you there are so many people entering the fold of Islam as a result of the awareness that is being created because of what's going on. People are wondering, I know so many Muslims, is this what they're all about? Let me read. So once they start reading and they start seeing for themselves, they turn to Islam. So wasn't that a point of mercy for them? Subhanallah. This is why we say Sometimes that which appears like it is harmful is actually beneficial. 
It brings benefit, but we don't realize. This is why I say, save yourselves from depression by believing that once you've made a dua to Allah to do the best thing, whatever happened is actually the best. It's the best for me, my dunya and my akhirah. You see, when we make a dua of istikhara, what do we say? Istikhara means to seek the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, oh Allah, if this is good for me and my deen and my dunya and my akhirah and my future and so on, my life, then make it easy for me, let me have it. And if it is not good for me, my life, my, my living, my religion, my future, then keep it away from me and take it away from me. When Allah takes it away from us, we become upset. We say, ya Allah. You took this away from me. Allah says, but didn't you make the dua to say, if it is bad for me, take it away from me. We know it's bad for you. You think it's good for you. So we took it away from you based on your dua. And now you're complaining to us that you took it away from me. Subhanallah, this is man. Man is so short-sighted. He doesn't realize that Allah is the knower of the unseen. Allah knows absolutely everything. If you were to ask him and you have a good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you really think that he's going to let you down? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why here Allah returns the child.